Welcome to the podcast of MotorWeek, television's original automotive magazine. MotorWeek is made possible by TireRack.com, WeatherTech, Hum by Verizon, RockAuto.com, and State Farm. Here's your MotorWeek podcast host, John Davis. Thank you, Alec Webb. Welcome, everyone, to MotorWeek podcast number 175. Boy, you know, we're going to be at 200 before too much longer. Uh, joining me at Motor Week Central is writer-producer Brian Robinson. Hey, John. I'm really uh, glad to be here. Whoa. I, whoa. That's the Quit most... lying. Gee, what, <laughs> hey, hey, John. <laughs> hey, John. Joke. I'm really Look glad to be here. Is that six words? That's about three more than normal. Anyway, our road test producer, Ben Davis. Hey, guys. He's going to grunt. Online content coordinator, Greg Carlos. I'm here. And video producer and editor, Joe Ligo. We don't have a lightning round, but I still have the bell. You hit the bell, just to let you know, Mm. just nostalgic. just feels right. It just feels good. Okay, this is the show where we're going to talk about the winners of our annual Driver's Choice Awards. In case you haven't uh, known about them before and you've lived under a rock, Every year we pick winners uh, among the vehicles we've tested for that year at different categories, categories that people really buy. And then at the end of that, we always pick a best of the year, one of the vehicles that we think stands out the most. So we're going to start at the top. I'm going to name one of the winners. Everyone's going to have a chance to, to comment on it, why they personally think it is a driver's car or it earned the award. And then we'll move through. Our best small car uh, of the year. And this is the first time we have ever picked a car three years in a row. And that's the Honda Civic. Breaking new ground. Why did we do that, Brian? Uh, Well, they righted the ship on the Civic uh, two years ago. And then uh, this year they added the warm performance SI and the uh, super hot performance type R. Warm so. performance. I like that. Yeah. Hmm. They, they just keep improving on what was the best in its class by Keeping it fresh. making it broader. Well, making it broader, appeal to more people. Greg. Yeah, I think we were rewarded for that. And I just remember going down the list of other small cars. And we do this with other lists, but we say, is it better than the Civic? And I think all of us were in agreement that even though it had won the previous two times or the previous time, um, It just, it's the best, as as good as it gets in this segment. Yeah, and simply, no matter what kind of driver you are, it's your choice. They've got something there (laughs) for you. They've got something for you, for sure. Joe? I mean, like I said, they kept it fresh and, like you said, made it broader. And I agree with Greg. If it can't beat it, then then if nothing could beat it, then it's three years in a row. Why not? And the next winner, Best Family Sedan, could well be up there for a while because uh, it's the Honda Accord. And I think what hit most of us is um, this is no longer just a run-of-the-mill four-door family car. It's edgy. It's got some sporty styling, and it's definitely the freshest offering out there in that category. You can get a manual, which is cool. Yeah. Turbo engines, all turbo engines. Quarter-line luxury car inside, and they finally got the interface uh, right with bringing some knobs back. Yeah, for sure. I personally the vw guy that you guys know i am i'm looking forward for the passat to be all new and i think as a driver that might be my choice next year <laughs> it's gonna be a good uh interesting looking good car for since sure there's, yeah. since there's a new jet as well accord, i was surprised by how well the accord did drive yeah. having driven previous accords this one seemed like they took it up a notch mm-hmm. best convertible uh the mazda mx5 miata rf so well, specifically, as we all know, a, a Miata is the answer to any car question ever. You're looking for a car, just buy a Miata. <laughs> Especially if so convertible is in the equation. Yeah, yeah. And I that's did. the thing is, what's the what's the convertible competition? I mean, like a Buick Cascada or something. I mean, the Miata is so fun. I mean, Why would you not take it? Yeah, 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 um, I forgot. That made it stand out. Yeah, yeah. The RF with the retractable uh, hardtop. They just did such an excellent job on look this good. compared to the last uh, one. So. I mean, engineering-wise, I think the car is actually very impressive. So fun to drive, and uh, I like the look of the retractable uh, fastback. Not sure that I would buy one, but yeah, that's like what RF, one. by the way, stands for. Yeah, retractable fastback. It's behind you, so you can't <laughs> yeah. really tell the difference. It, Rough blind spot, but well, too. before you know, it was very the, the the iconic shape of the Miata was always there. This has a little bit more styling, and I'm I'm not one that wants to see the Miata change that much, but I think it does improve the and it's nice profile when it is up. You have a hard roof, which yeah. you can't get in a regular Miata. Best luxury sedan BMW 5 Series. 
he, yeah, that's uh, it's almost no surprise. It's noteworthy, though. You know, you think five series is more of a sports event, but um, with this latest five series, they've proved that luxury is just as important to them as uh, sportiness, and it's super luxury, luxurious and sad. It really is. Yeah, and it's it's a the 3D car. What's that called? The thing that allows you to uh, see the outside of the car from uh, the inside. Yeah. It's like a round I view forget. or something. It takes view. that to, a, to another to level. That's it's crazy. Like VR That's a cool camera. Thing. It's very much like having a drone flying over I, th- I thought um, BMW had gotten into like a habit of not putting out the luxury that I expected, but then they bucked that trend with the 5 Series. That was really mm. quite opulent. Hmm. Meanwhile, a car that I think has surprised everybody in the automotive world <laughs> well is said, Greg. Well said. best sports sedan, since we were talking about the 5 Series, is the best luxury sedan. Best sports sedan came from pretty much out of nowhere. The Kia Stinger. Somebody want to just tell people what the Stinger really is? Oh. It's actually a five-door hatchback, but it's uh, all about being a sports sedan with a twin-turbo uh, V6. I was probably skeptical more than most going in, but uh, I think they pulled it off big time. Front engine, rear drive, well balanced. All wheel drive is an yeah. option. Um, it's a strange class for a key to be entering, but because uh, there really isn't any kind of affordable competition in that area. But they saw a spot, nailed it, gave it a cool name, boom. And the five door cool thing's growing on me. I when I, I when I first saw it, I was like, what what are they what are they doing here? And then I saw it in person. I'm like. It's almost right. totally disguised. If you don't know it's a five door, and you it's have a convenient, hard time like, figuring it out. Oh, for sure. Why screw around with a trunk when you can get that big opening and get stuff in the back <laughs> of the look car? Look at the man. seams in the back; they look almost like a trunk. There's no extra seamage around the rear window. I think they did a masterful job. But the driving is what the car is all about. Can you sit here at this table and think of anything that disappointed you about the car? I don't think it's quite as engaging as some of its rivals, German rivals in mm-hmm. particular. But you got to remember, this is Kia's first attempt. And for a first attempt, it's still pretty incredible, I think. And totally out That's of character. stuff you're just going to learn as time goes on. And I hope they continue to, de- to develop it. Yeah. Yeah, the fact that they hired some of the best engineers from BMW to work on it. Yeah, they, they had a smart. big wallet on this one for sure. Okay, best sport coupe uh, classification of a car mm. that's sort of – Hasn't been real strong for many years, but Lexus LC500, uh, eye-opening car, stunning to look at, but even more stunning to drive. Amen. You know, I, I can remember we all thought, you know, it's going to be another piece of pretty Lexus sculpture, but wow. Yeah, it uh, it actually backed up its looks pretty well. Yeah. Um, I had a great time driving it. Didn't put it through any major performance tests, but... Um, as far as a grand touring car or something you can just cruise on the highway, it's it's solid. It's more solid than I remember any other Lexus I've driven. Mm. Well, it got it me. So good. They had a lot of fun with it. I mean, when you go to the interior, you have this ultra modern exterior. You go to the interior, and maybe it's just me and my age, but I saw a lot of 1950s and 1960s GM dashboard elements there. Right angles, unusual looking air vents, knobs where you didn't expect them the to be. The lines on the door lines panel. The, it was just really like they told the designers, go on, you know, the cars that you drew as a kid, you know, go back and look at some of those drawings and put them in here. It was kind of cool. So it's, I wouldn't call it retro, but it certainly was different. And the best execution of the spindle grill we have ever seen. Yeah, mm. they. I think it is. It's still a matter of taste, but uh, that and the uh, the uh, the new LS I think are much improved. Best performance car turned out to be a duet: Dodge Challenger SRT Demon and the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawk. It's like if you had to buy two vehicles for your garage, so you're pretty much set for anything that can happen. Those would be the two. That seemed I want to comment. That's mm, I love me pretty some wild. Huh? <laughs> I love me some Cherokee. Uh, that was probably one of the favorite cars I drove last year. I mean, everything about it that you've read is absolutely talking true. about the Trackhawk. Uh, I'm talking about the Demon. Oh, the Demon too. That thing okay. Is, uh, it's just well. It's elaborate. Amazing. Elaborate. He's I mean, sitting here sucking someone, air. Anyone can hop in that car and just run ten second quarter miles, and anyone can go by it. It's just pretty amazing. What a world we live in. Yeah. That's an award winning performance yeah. uh, effort for sure. 
You know, it's. I wonder what they're going to do for an encore because I mean they can't just crank them, keep cranking those out because they'll kill the value. Uh, back of them. to my last podcast, SRT needs to make a yeah. off-road ready Jeep with a warranty. Bam, there you go. Just well, super burly and purpose built. Yeah, yeah, well, if the if it happens, it's because I suggested it on the to the engineers on the Demon <laughs> event, and that because they were like, well, "What do we do next?" And I was like, "Well, you've got the Hellcat, now you've got the Demon. The next one needs to be you just have to go full Satan." Full <laughs> Satan. Well, yeah. The Dodge Challenger <laughs> yeah. Satan? Yeah, a thousand horsepower. There you go, Dodge Challenger Satan. <laughs> a thousand horsepower, full Satan model. Yeah, yeah wow. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't just we'll that and go back and say, hey. And then a, a competitor would come out with the Exorcist that kind of like uh, <laughs> yeah, wards right. away would demons. That, wouldn't that be great? <laughs> it would should. be. Somebody should it come out. I think Tennessee was doing a <laughs> you know, special edition Camaro or something. But we'd be back, at, you, know, you know, remember 10 years ago, we're all sitting around saying, you know, horse power looks like it's dead we're not going to have any muscle cars anymore yeah. we're in another heyday yeah, for oh. sure and anybody that wants to say man just you know there's too much technology in the driving experience now and uh, that may be true but i mean if you can sit in a car and pull 10 second quarters with no experience technology is awesome right <laughs> i still love technology I, I think technology <laughs> has made all of us better drivers, at, especially at higher speeds. Always. Yeah. And, and it's the same with racing. I mean, look at all the technology that's crammed into a Formula One car. My goodness. And the future will just be making that technology feel like it's not there. Yeah. That'll be. Which. That'll be the. Porsche is already there. Porsche is already yeah. done. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can't argue yeah. that. Absolutely. Yeah. I'd take that last statement back. <laughs> no. But they're only going to get better. Yeah. So. Now we have to turn our sights to the new style of American cars, and that is uh, utility vehicles. And we've picked three, small, large, and luxury. Let's start with the small uh, SUV of the year. Best small utility, Mazda CX-5. Why? Well, there's a lot of cool ones to choose from in that area, but being that this is a driver's choice uh, award, you've got to give it to the Mazda just because it's got a little sportier edge than all the others. And they took all, yeah, they took all the interior luxury from the CX-9 and brought it down to the CX-5. Very nice inside. It is a good-looking car. I see them everywhere. They mm-hmm. still look good. I still look at them. I can't add any more to that. <laughs> One, as well. Great interior. Our best large utility, which we used to call our best family size utility. Uh, this one... Caught me by surprise because I just didn't expect it to be as good as it is. And it is terrific, and that's the Volkswagen Atlas. I mm-hmm. mean, a lot of people look at it and say, well, they took the best of everything out there from Honda and everyone else and put it into a slightly bigger package. And, you know, that's about right. It's a good Ed, strategy. you got to get them while they're hot, dude. They're giving them away for cheaper than I think they're worth, honestly. What a, they're a real it's a, bargain. It's a bargain and a half. And they've continued so to be big. a bargain. I mean, it's been out now for a while, and, and they've act, they got one of the best warranties out there. Uh, and they're, it's really for a three-row SUV. And if you're a big guy like me and you kind of don't want to cram yourself into something too small, it's a really nice – you know, it fits very nicely between the body on frame, uh, Tahoe and, and, and Expedition, and something like a Pilot. I think it fits right in that I was niche. I was amazed when I first saw it as how big it is. But when you drive it, it doesn't drive like a vehicle anywhere near that big. No, I'll be sad when Volkswagen. Oh, I'll be sad when Volkswagen's sort of slab styling goes away because it looks good. It's all the square cars. It's love or hate on the styling. I'm not a huge fan of the styling, but the car will win you over for sure. Um, do you see how small the engine looks in the engine bay when you pop the hood? It's unreal. <laughs> well, that's Volkswagen. Best luxury utility: the Land Rover, Range Rover, Velar. A Jag F Pace with a totally different everything except maybe the basic chassis and powertrains. Yeah, all the Range Rover luxury uh, you want in a really sweet looking package. Uh, I thought they did a great job. If this is badge engineering, I'd like to see more of it because you can't really tell that they're mm. similar except you know if you know look at some of the specs. The F Pace that was our was that last year's winner or the year before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, the interior on Land Rover, or, well, on Range Rover stuff especially, they're just wonderful. Yeah, the leather, crazy and the, comfortable the materials, and yeah. now some some of the design is a little weird. With the, they got a lot of shiny materials, and the infotainment's a little not responsive. But 
In terms of just sitting and enjoying it as a passenger, it's it's wonderful. The the tech takes a lot of uh, getting used to, but that's part of the charm, I guess. Once you, I mean, if you own the car, you're going to spend the well, time it takes. Especially to, if it's because it's British, it's almost like and part like, of their character. Yeah, they like misspell words on purpose. Huh? <laughs> they misspell words on purpose. <laughs> I'm talking about you in oh, color. T Y R E tires. With them on that. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Best minivan. Last year was the Chrysler Pacifica, which we really loved. This year it's the Honda Odyssey, which apparently we really love a little really, bit more. Really, really love. Yeah, it's, they're the only two big players in the game. It's the and, freshest. Yeah, well, yeah, Sienna might get in the game here next year. You and, love the Sienna, dude. I do. You can get all-wheel drive in that, and there are things I like about the, that, that. That is important that I don't like to any me, others. too. So next year might be a for real competition in that category. I think, well, like we were talking about the Accord, they've elevated the uh, Odyssey almost to luxury car status. I mean, the quality of materials, which you can get on inside, well, is very and impressive. And feature-wise, to compete with crossovers, there's so many cool things you can get in vans that maybe are a little gimmicky, but you can't get in crossovers. The sliding, like the, the horizontal sliding seats, the vacuum, the cabin uh, PA system, the screens, <laughs> the head... I mean, if you're a gimmicky person, this thing is... Loaded. I will say one of the things that held us up in voting for this was the stow and go in the Pacifica versus mm. taking out the seats in the um, Odyssey, which Ben and I found out is not. Oh, it's not it hard, is. but it's also not something that you. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Putting sp- stuff in there, right? You're, you're not going to do it on the spur of the moment. Out, whereas, like for me to put the seats in the stow and go with the Pacifica, that's nothing. I mean, it's, yeah. it's so easy. Well, yeah. I mean, fortunately for me, though, I would seldom have to take the second row out there's enough room with the third row folded that that would be enough for me yeah we just got done driving it back and down to roebling and back and uh yeah it's great cruising highway vehicle as well best pickup truck ford (coughs) f-150 best selling uh pickup truck for 37 36 37 Uh, years whatever it is close to 40 40, yeah. yeah and um They've done some major revamping. Uh, this is to the already new, only, what, three years ago, all-aluminum truck. Outrageous stuff with twin turbo motors and stuff, too, if you haven't adopted those or you're a little wary about them. <laughs> they definitely on board. deliver Six, the goods. 60 or 70%, maybe, if you, of all F-150s are V6-powered now. <laughs> Who ever wow. thought that would happen? Wow. And the Raptor was new last year, which, you know, went next level as well. So. And And – some of Ford's crossover utility styling is a little questionable, in my opinion, but the truck still looks yeah. so good. I've, we had that black F-150 here. Yeah. What a gorgeous Sleek truck. Looking. And I think that when they, when they uh, made the all-new aluminum one, the, the, the current or the one just before this refresh, it was in the right direction. But on this one, they kind of put it all together. They said, all right, let's go back to the drawing board and make it a little bit more cohesive. And I think they did a great job. I think job. they did, too. That's a good way to put it. The front end, it makes a lot more. It's just, it's still in your face, but it's it's not uh, and Maybe that garish. was the plan. Maybe yeah. they wanted to make a statement with the first one and then kind of smooth everything out in the second. Greg sums it up perfectly, as always. Yes. Also, also, awesome. new, sure. call me the closer. Oh. <laughs> also, new uh, Power Stroke diesel coming real soon to the F-150, yes. Six-cylinder. Yes. Six. And that's the first in diesel maybe. in an F-150, right? You were saying? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Best eco-friendly. This is the second year in a row we've given it to the Chevrolet Bolt, B-O-L-T, EV. Uh, I think the general consensus was no one has outshone it. And, um, you, you can't know, argue we, the numbers, right? We know people, even though it's rated at, what, 238 miles of range, I know people that are getting 20 and 30% more than that. It's making one-pedal driving, which bothers me, uh, more popular, and that is where you use the paddles on the steering wheel to brake. See, I love that. Dude, the regen yeah. on you demand. Do, you do like I it. I love yeah. one-pedal she- driving. Chevy yeah. is genius for that regen on demand pedal. I and think it's that's a, catching paddle. on. People mm-hmm. really like it. I'd say if you're not willing to commit to full EV, the Kia Nero is a nice, like, pat yourself on the back, eco-mobile. Well, the but insight's worth noting as there's well. There's quite a few. But the bold is not still clarity. not inside clarity. I'm clarity, sorry, yeah. but nobody. There's a new insight coming though. Is yeah, there is yeah. a new. Yeah, we just saw it. It's yeah. it's built off the um, Civic chassis. That's full yeah. electric, most likely. No, it's a hybrid. Hybrid. It's a hybrid. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a clarity full electric coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. I thought that that got held back because I think that's still under 100 miles of range. Yeah, it's like 80 or something. Yeah, because yeah. it was originally designed as a hydrogen powered vehicle. Right. Uh, best. Um, Dream Machines, we always pick uh, three of the most outrageous vehicles we've 
gotten in this year. Uh, we'll just run down the list pretty quick. Aston Martin DB11, which I think is one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. Uh, agreed. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Porsche 911 GT2 RS. What can you say? Oh, yeah. Can't really argue that one. <sighs> and also Super. the most outrageous vehicle that and we've had favorite. in here in a long time, and Ben's favorite, the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon G550, but a 4x4 squared. And this was, uh, what, $250,000 outrageously uh, like customized? The, the last hurrah for the old G-Wagon the old before G-Wagon. the new mm. one comes. So awesome. But when you look at this one awesome. versus the new one, the new one looks like – a, a child offspring. It doesn't look, you know, just, this thing was yeah. so jacked up and so uh, customized. Well, those it's, crazy axles that it had, the portal axles or whatever they were called, yeah, gave yeah, it yeah. extra ground That's clearance. Right. The thing was huge. Yeah, yeah, I had those on an old Unimog. Mercedes been That's rolling those forever. Where they, yeah, they, That's yeah. where it came from. Okay, so that is our Motorway Driver's Choice uh, categories. Our best of the year. Drum roll, please. Okay, I thought I was going to be the only one doing that. Yeah. Kia Stinger. Yeah, we should have saved some of the stuff we said earlier for the We said so much good yeah. stuff about it, we yeah. ran out of things to say. I, I will sum We've it up by, two of them. by what we said in the road test. We said there's just no ifs, ands, or buts about the car. It really does almost everything extraordinarily well. And we, you're right. Talk about you – know, we had it on the street before we picked – the uh, as our winner, but now we've taken it to Roebling for uh, a week of thrashing. I, yeah, I gotta say, I came away maybe more impressed with his performance on the track than on the street. Uh, tons of power coming out of corners. The brakes were better than I, way better than I thought they were going to be. Especially after going, you're into like that eighth or ninth lap around Roebling, and they start fading going into turn one. But this thing kept asking for more. Would have liked a little more feel through the wheel, but I got to say, that thing was a lot of fun to drive around the track. And you know what I noticed? More people came to look at that Stinger when we had it parked than a lot of the other cars we had. Some of the exotics we had. Right. I mean, granted, we had a Lamborghini, and that always attracts attention. But But they saw the Kia sticker on the back of this, and they all walked up like, what is that? It was really odd to see how many people – and they didn't just look at it and say, huh, and walk away. They wanted to look inside it. They wanted to look around it. It was – It's attainable. It attracted a lot of attention, and that surprised me. So that's our Motor Week Driver's Choice Picks for 2018. You can get the details on our website, uh, also the videos. And uh, it was uh, a lot of fun picking them this year. So uh, mm-hmm. on until next year. We're going to switch gears here and go to a viewer quest- question. This is Nick uh, via email has asked this. He said he recently took his car in for an oil change and a tire rotation. After waiting a while... They came out from the dealer and said that he had swollen wheel lugs. In other words, the uh, lug nuts that are on, hold the wheel on, they had swollen. Uh, he'd have to buy new ones if he wanted to rotate the tires. It was going to cost him quite a bit of money. He'd never heard of it before. What's the deal? I have to admit, I had neither except for the fact that Pat Goss did a segment on it some years ago here. What the swollen wheel lugs means is these are lug nuts that are built in two pieces. There's an inner core and an outer core. And on some vehicles, because of weather conditions or heat from just the tire, you know, wheel rotating, they become unlaminated and they cannot be gotten off the wheel with a normal uh, wrench. They, like, expand and crack and warp. They expand and crack and they warp and sometimes they have to basically take a – uh, a pneumatic chisel and chisel them off. There's a class action lawsuit against at least Ford uh, because they used them on so many different vehicles. Why do they do this? The inner core is steel, but they make the outer cap look like the wheel. So, so it's either an aluminum they're more or a chrome so or it's a chrome some or kind of shiny steel something. or something. And um, unfortunately, Nick, uh, it is real. And if and the the other problem with them is is if you have a flat tire on the road. Uh, you probably can't get the wheel off, and even if you call a, a roadside service, they may not be able to get the uh, tire off. Uh, most uh, pneumatic uh, drills don't uh, don't have enough power to, to loosen the nuts, so it's a real issue, and it can cost you. We've heard prices of eight to ten bucks a lug nut to have them replaced. So it is a problem. Uh, we hear that a lot of new car warranties do not cover them. Uh, I don't know what the cure is, except maybe not use them anymore. So, 
You wouldn't got anything else to add? Nothing I can add to that. One thing Pat Goss said was uh, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, he'd, well, he already doesn't like impact wrenches. But he says impact wrenches can cause the lugs to shear and fall apart because just, you know. If because you people good, you have them set too high. Right. If you don't have the right torque setting, it can cause the lugs to twist and break prematurely because you're just going too hard on them with an impact wrench. Or it could wrench. probably cause the delamination that introduces moisture and rust and causes them to expand in the first place. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I still prescribe to the idea that even if you go somewhere and use a uh, pneumatic wrench to um, tighten the lug nuts on your wheel, you still need that final tightening by using a torque wrench. It's really the only way. Yeah, I was lucky with that. My father was so cheap growing up, we didn't have any cool tools. It's just a breaker bar and torque wrench. So you learned to do it by hand. Yeah, I still don't. That's it's, it's like against my nature to use any sort of tool. Air <laughs> tools? Air tool, yeah. <laughs> Anybody got a rant and rave? Uh, Don't get me started. What? (laughs) Go ahead. I (laughs) interrupted. What did you say? No, no. We were just saying how much we enjoyed the podcast. Just comment. Just classic Robinson. (laughs) That's what it's like around the Motor Week offices. I'm I'm about to rant about him. (laughs) Anybody got a rant and rave this week? (laughs) No. Yeah, actually, I do. I have a question. I can... I know I can be a little militant in my uh, policing of road rules, but we had a situation (laughs) in uh, Roebling, and Joe was driving, and he pulled through a parking spot. Uh. And I just got to know, because I I find that that's like, if if there is literally nobody in the parking lot and it's 5 a.m., I have no problem with it. But when you're in a busy parking lot and you pull into a space and the next one's open and you pull through with two cars on either side, I absolutely hate that. Am I the only one? No, no. Because because there's a reason there's a line there is you're not supposed to pull over it because if somebody else is coming in and then everybody gets mad at everybody and then I'm mad at you because you caused the situation and I'm just always mad. I don't like anybody crossing through parking lots other than the prescribed paths. That happens all the time. I know it does, but my 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 attitude is... I'm not even as mad about that as I am about the pulling through. See, that's the pull, just, it was a three-row SUV. It was e- It would be easier to get out. I thought, I'm going to pull through. It makes it easier to get out of here. I don't have to back up into oncoming traffic. But should you have done it? Is there a law? That's I my. Mean, qu- well, that is my I question. No I'll, I will absolutely... Ta- I'm a I will, fan of the I will pull never through. bring it up again if everybody here at the table says I'm a jerk. And I, it I don't be. think so. I agree with you. Case by case basis. Yeah. Yeah. I'd I say it no depends on the, and the I agree. difficulty of the vehicle you're driving. There are definitely no. That's not an excuse. <laughs> know how to drive your vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> I. There is absolutely a case by case basis. Like I said, if there's not a ton of people around, no problem. But it happens so much when there are two cars on either side of the parking spot, and somebody pulls right, right. through. I like when they forget that they have to get a whole cartload of stuff, and they get back, and then the guy <laughs> behind, them, behind is parked them so close, right. they're like they can't get See, to their truck. Especially if they've got a pickup truck and they can't even lower the tailgate. Like, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> now, if it's if it's a directional lot, like ones that have one way paths, then I guess the pull through is dangerous because then you get the car facing the wrong direction. You couldn't pull that through in those situations because yeah, those you are have staggered to, you spots. Have to turn. Yeah. It wouldn't be a straight pull through. Yeah. But. All right. Well, that almost started a little war. That was fun. I do prefer those, actually. Staggered what? one-way spots are so much easier to get in and out of oh, than I agree. traditional 90-degree spots. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to worry about two-way traffic. Usually, although some people don't seem to, you don't have to play by the can't, left, can't Don't understand what an arrow painted on the road means. I always just park really far away, but then you guys yell to me that about that, too. I like uh-huh. to park where nobody else is, and it's like, oh, thanks for parking a mile away, Joe. I'm going to start taking an Uber everywhere after this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> thank you joe thank you brian robinson ben davis and greg carlos i'd also like to thank our audio engineer jim bigwood and our podcast creator bob mixter uh everyone if you're looking for motor week on your local public television station our website has a new station locator you just put in your city or your zip code and it pops right up uh, at motorweek.org be sure to try it also catch us on velocity uh, on tuesday nights and lots of other times Uh, That's about it for us here at Motor Week Central. I'm John Davis. Thanks very much for joining us for all forms of Motor Week. You've been listening to the podcast of Motor Week, television's original automotive magazine. Motor Week is made possible by TireRack.com, WeatherTech, Hum by Verizon, RockAuto.com, and State Farm. For additional information on podcasts, videos, and showtimes, visit our website at motorweek.org and watch Motorweek 
television's longest-running automotive magazine series each week on your local PBS station.